Hey guys, Kyle, the Death Knight of Anime here, bringing you my review for My Hero Academia Season 4, Episode 21. So, to start off, the beginning of this episode had so many fun little character moments, and one that's easy to miss if you're not, like, fully, like, dissecting everything in that, in that little scene, is Jiro's little teaching moment, trying to keep Bakugo and Kaminari in line from, from, from basically doing any, from basically doing any, like, improv or going overboard. And again, it's a very small scene, but as as a as a viewer, it shows to us how how Jiro has has taken that more has has basically since overcoming her insecurities, taking on a much more active and hands-on role. Like, well, and, and thanks in large part to everyone's encouragement and that in itself the more is the more important point because to me this like this setting with the whole <clears throat> this setting and this arc with the whole concert and the and the school festival and whatnot the one thing i think the one thing i i really clued into looking back on this arc is that <clears throat> Is, is is that with is that what Horikoshi did with this arc is that, is that by giving us a very simple school festival, it actually provided the most natural integration of the friendship trope. Because through through everyone working together to put on this concert, it builds up it builds up Jiro's confidence, knowing no, 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 that just knowing she has she basically has all these people who support him. She has all these people who who support her, while at the same time building on building on their bond as a class. And and trust me, it it is in these group pro it is in these group projects and it is in these group projects where, where you do end up finding where you do end up like like pretty much bonding more often than not. Like you you, you basically do find you you do find that this weird sense of camaraderie by by from by working together on these like on these group school project kind of things and that's and that's perfectly exemplified here it's it's a perfect it's the perfect and most most naturalistic way in order to in order to incorporate the whole the whole friend the whole friendship trope of, of, of a shonen genre i think <clears throat> and <clears throat> and <clears throat> of course in, inter intermingled within all that as well, we, we also see a nice little moment of Kirishima recognizing recognizing like like, like Mina, like how, how how invested Mina has become in this as well, showing how how he how he has grown to, to respect her as an equal now, whereas before it was always him looking up to her almost. So it it sh it shows how on an equal how how on an equal respect respect and playing field that they are on on now. <clears throat> But um, yeah, after that though, we pretty much did dive right into the confrontation between Izuku and Gentle, which is a moment where you can not only see Gentle's internet fame actually working against him, but one thing I don't think I've ever really appreciated before now is how quick Izuku clued into the, the fact of who Gentle was under the skies. And again, a minor detail, but it does display something I feel it has been underplayed a little in this season which is how in, in, intuitive Izuku is and just how much his intelligence and ability in order to assess the situation is equally as much of a factor to who he is as a hero and a character as as, as like as, as we saw him as we saw him like immediately clue into where Gentle and Labrava were going he knew the implications just based off hearing what what pretty much <clears throat> just hearing what Midnight had said and remember what Midnight had said, and and he knew in that moment of what he had to do and how and what he needed to do in order to in the moment to prevent that worst case scenario from happening. <clears throat> now, as far as the core of the fight itself, ob the, the big thing is that obviously this is a like th th this is the fine this is basically the, the the big climactic final battle of the arc basically that this this is the one this is the one final battle and. <clears throat> Now, and obviously, this is this battle in itself is much different compared to previous final fights in the sense where it's a much more of a simplistically grounded grounded fight with less of the world-ending threat to it, and and much more of the and much more of just just gentle being a simple a simple thief a simple a simple scoundrel and. 
a simple thief and a simple scoundrel and whatnot. Like, he, he has no, like, big grand ambition to destroy the world. He's just a simple, average, everyday thief. And, <clears throat> and that's honestly perfectly fine. Because not all villain... The, the, thing, the thing I think that really... The, the thing that always, has always drawn me to a, a lot of... The thing that kind of has always drawn me to, like... Like like Spider Man like like Spider Man movies whether Raimi, whether Raimi like whether Raimi or um, whether Raimi or or the MCU versions is that they always they try and they keep it simplistic they they, they don't do it do it as like a big world ending event and because superhero stories they don't always have to be a big world event that they can always just be these simple like these simple little battles of ideals and that's kind of what we <clears throat> that's kind of what we have here he's that's kind of what we have here um like a, 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 like villains or criminals they don't when it comes to villains or criminals they don't always want to destroy the world they do sometimes more often than not have much simpler ambitions in fact as as we see in fact the, the one one strength but by pretty much by us focus by this battle being not necessarily one of, uh, of, um, of, like, wanting to destroy the world, it actually allows, um, it allows the ideals of the characters to take front and center focus. And in this case, you can definitely see, in that case, you can definitely see a lot of similarities between Izuku and, and Gentle. Like, they both have these very, they both have very, uh, very kind of peaceful ideals when it comes to, when it comes to heroism versus villainy, I guess uh, you could say, but <clears throat> but but at the same time you can also see the differences. Like for instance, with Izuku, he's he basically he knows the circumstances. He knows the he knows what's more than likely going to happen if if he loves Gentle in order to in order to do wh whatever he wants to do to UA. So, but with Gentle, he that he says, but with Gentle, he's basically kind of arrogant he thinks he can with gentle he thinks he can pretty much do he, he thinks he can basically infiltrate ua with, with, without getting caught without causing a ruckus but he's but 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 because he's so arrogant he doesn't even think of the consequences and what could possibly happen like or or maybe he does know the consequences he just doesn't care but yeah he's, he's not thinking about like what he's only thinking about what his ambition He's only thinking of his ambition and not necessarily the consequences of what could spawn from this. Um, <clears throat> so in in that sense, it shows that yeah, they're, they're they're basically both fighting for they're both basically both fighting for what 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 they pretty much believe to be the the, the, the right the right course of action. But at the <clears throat> but at and and with gentle, obviously he it feels like he, he almost is trying to it feels like he's almost trying to teach you a lesson almost. But the thing is, they can't. They pretty much can't afford to have that lesson thought of them right now. That if if Gentle succeeds, then 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 the higher ups are going to come in, like probably fire like like pretty much Nezu, and put one of their lackeys in charge of the school. And then yeah, like he again, he's not thinking of the cons. He's not thinking of the consequences. Izuku is, <laughs> and. So yeah, a very a very interesting how 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 it is basically a battle of ideals and how they both have these ambitions, and and what they want to protect. But it's like only only one seems to be really thinking of the actual repercussions almost. <clears throat> and yeah, let's talk adaptation of this of this episode because we actually did cover around a lot, well definitely a lot more I think than last week, which was like we covered from. From chapters 175 to 178, so that's like three chapters worth of content. And considering a good chunk of that was the fight between Izuku and, and and considering a good chunk of that fight was between Izuku and Gentle, it, it was it's not kind of hard to see how you could fit like like for instance, three chapters of content into this episode into this episode. <clears throat> but because of that, we now because of, because of that, it's actually put it put things in a weird an interesting situation. Where we only have like six chapters left on this arc, so while I don't want to get ahead of myself, Bones might, keyword being might, be able to actually adapt the next arc depending on how things play out from here, or at least the first chunk of the next arc. But I am, 
like the, the one thing that's still keeping my the one thing I'm still kind of keeping my expectations a little reserved on for now is that the, the next arc has like like nine or ten chapters long. So like even even if we continue this uh, <clears throat> even if we continue this uh, even if this chap even if this like arc ends in the next like two episodes or something like that, can can they really fit the entirety of the next arc in the uh, <clears throat> In, in the remaining episodes left, or, like, yeah, I'm just kind of curious how that's going to play out exactly. Um, but, yeah, guys, that's all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and a list of Crunchyroll. Dead Man Venway, signing off. Later, guys.